Thanks. Good morning to Image Matrix tech editor Juro Sen. Juro, what has happened with the rocket? Uh, Tim, I love the quote. It's the rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Sometimes after a big night, I feel like that. But I've got to say, as a, 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 a fan of space and what SpaceX is doing, I have absolutely no doubt this has been a pretty good success because they've advanced the program by going further. They had separation from the Super Heavy booster and, of course, uh, Starship, and they got into space. So obviously, they didn't want it to explode, but it was quite spectacular when the booster went. However, I would have to say, Tim, that it was a, just an incredible morning watching it. And I think uh, they, they're, they're on track. They like to break things and see how they go. They have to learn from here. And they learned quite a lot from the first one, Tim. And to move on from there, I think, uh, and, and produce a flight that uh, they will get some great results out of it, I think are pretty positive. Anyone who thinks this is a bit of a failure because of the explosions has no idea what they're talking about because space travel is dangerous and you have to get it right. And it's better to break them now before you have people on board. Well, well, that's that's the point. That's the point, because there's a fine line, because going forward, they want to try and get 50, 60 people on these things. You don't want them blowing up. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, sometimes NASA takes risks too in the past. Obviously, this is SpaceX, but they're all linked up and what they have to do. If you go back to the first space shuttle, that launched for the first time with astronauts on board. So they were pretty gutsy, and that thing worked. And that was far more complicated because of all the bits and pieces they had to put together. So, yes, Tim, absolutely right. They'll need a number of more flights, and they can turn them around pretty quickly there at Texas, and that's the good thing. So they've made a lot of changes, but look at that thing go. It was just beautiful, amazing. What sort of money do you reckon... I know I'm, I'm, that's a question without notice, but just just for yeah. that, <laughs> yeah. Look, uh, you know, look, hundreds of millions easy um, to to do a flight uh, like this. Uh, if you're looking at uh, the cost of air, all the setup, recovery, and the processes moving into it, you know, they, they're like, uh, and then the billions get pretty quickly uh, chewed into. So the big thing too to remember is Starlink, which is part of the SpaceX program, really helps SpaceX make a lot of money. So the space thing is good for Elon mm. Musk. Uh, they just have to make sure they keep it going. Great to get your insight on that this morning. Now, according to, and we change subjects here, according to a new mm. cyber report, almost half of all these Black Friday-themed texts and emails are scams, Juro. What's your advice? <laughs> My advice is unless you get uh, go to a website directly, don't click on any links because this came through from Bitdefender during the week, a very interesting report, and Bitdefender do cybersecurity, and what they found was some amazing stats. And, you know, almost half of the emails and texts you get are absolute scam spam. So uh, some of the things you'll see are $100 Amazon uh, vouchers, Aldi gift cards, discount designer watches, they're always a beauty, and grab the latest uh, gadgets. Those sorts of terms are put in the emails or the texts to try and grab your attention. And you think, OK, with Black Friday coming up, it seems to go longer every year, then you're going to uh, click on it and therefore they get your information. So as I said, 46% are scams. Interestingly, almost 40% came from the Netherlands, which was really interesting. And the top companies targeted were Amazon, Aldi, and Target. So, and finance industry was the top. And retail was actually third. And finance industry, obviously, with banking and that sort of stuff, maybe PayPal, they're trying to get your money details or your banking details. So it's a big reminder, Tim, on top of getting your passwords, passwords right, just don't click on anything. I know the sales look very tempting, but make sure you go to the websites directly. Yeah, absolutely. Now, good news for iPhone 14 owners. Yeah, absolutely. So remember the story we did earlier in the year about uh, iPhone and their SOS satellite service? Well, Apple has actually extended the service for uh, free for another year for iPhone 14. So it was launched a year ago in the US or North America and earlier in the year here in Australia and New Zealand. We've always seen someone get the benefits of being rescued in New Zealand from the service. And I've really got to say, it's a no-brainer if you've got an iPhone to, to get used to using this. You can actually practice. So the great thing is it's still free, and if you get lost, you get injured in the bush, 
you just use your phone like you can see here and move it around find a satellite and you text with the emergency services so it's really cool this stuff was really beyond a lot of people a couple of years ago and uh, you can just do it with your phone it's just fantastic and it's good to see it's free uh, for another year for iphone 14 users uh, thank you apple yeah, well, people are going to be using that kind of uh, mm. technology when they travel at Christmas time or in late November. What else should they do to keep themselves in check? Well, the first thing, you should get a cradle for your phone or if, you, if you've got a car that doesn't have a fancy screen in it, then you might have uh, the opportunity to buy this. This is from Laser Navigator. This is only around $169, something like that. And what it does is it turns your, your dumb car into a smart one. And I've got a Jeep and sometimes I think it's pretty dumb with its entertainment system, Tim. Very frustrating. But as you can see here, I love my Belkin cradle, uh, but I've taken it out and tested this unit and it's pretty cheap. But I'll tell you what, the fit and finish by laser here is pretty impressive. So when you set it up, you all you just turn your car into an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto system, and it can connect through a cable or you can listen to it through your uh, FM radio. So um, that's not as secure, but you can do that. You can put the music in that. So what it means is you're hands-free and you're safer. Don't put anything on the windscreen because it's actually illegal to block the view but this is a little bit further back and as you can see here it's really easy to sync up and it means you can have all the access hands-free to your phone calls and mapping and that sort of stuff your music whatever so just because you might have an old clunker you can actually throw this in and you get a high-tech car for 169 bucks and you don't ever have to touch your phone it's just all audio so really really cool device from laser Oh, I love this. Uh, okay, where do I get it from? And I'll be at your place on Tuesday to get it installed. Where, where, do, where do we get it from? <laughs> Just go to uh, you know, Laser's website, laser.co.au, uh, I think it is. I don't know. But you can find it. I have a link from my website. But Laser, really good Australian company. And uh, they sell a lot of stuff at uh, Big W too. So there you go. Oh, well, give us your, give us your website again because uh, lots of people should go there anyway. Yeah, emismatrix.tech, and I'll have more follow-up on the uh, Elon Musk adventure this morning as well. Oh, beautiful. All right, well, I'll shout you a bowl of pasta during the week and we'll get that thing fitted, bought and fitted. Good to talk to you, Jero. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Speak to you next week, mate.